As far as I'm concerned, not all boats will float on a high tide. It, it just won't. So if this thing goes on another six months, I can see more than a couple of companies struggling. If you're an investor, like a Joe Schmo, like me, where you're putting your own cash into this stuff and you're underwater and you don't know what's what's coming you're unsure do i put my money into those now because it money's cheap but risk is high or do you you know talk to producers ready you know who are armed and ready to go a lot of people have made a lot of money in the past investing in the uranium space and there's quite a few people today hoping it'll be the same for them in the near future but the reality is most uranium investors are underwater so we've been through a process over the last three or four months interviewing various ceos speaking to utilities and fund managers to get a better sense of the investment rationale for this space we spoke today to industry veteran mark chalmers who's the ceo of energy fuels and get a few of his thoughts um, and we discuss some of our ideas with him plus he talks to us about what may happen next week with the working group announcement if you want to look at any of those topics look in the description below and click on the relevant timestamp that'll take you to that part of the video and if i can ask that you please click the subscription button in the corner to subscribe to our youtube channel and the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this anyway have a listen to the conversation and tell us what you think in the comments below. Hi, Mark. How are you? Excellent as always, man. Well, yeah, fantastic. It's good to good to see you um, a bit online because we caught up at the WNA. I think that was quite a successful event. What, what did what was your takeaway? Yeah, well, look at you know it's hard to believe that a month's gone by, hasn't it? I know, I know, I know. Well, it was a good event. I, I really enjoyed being there again and and uh, yeah, caught up with a lot of people. And of course, you know, I think there was a lot of excitement around the fuel report uh, as possibly being a catalyst for change. And I think I think we discussed that it wouldn't be. But uh, the next catalyst for change is the working group. Got about a week or so before that uh, is due to announce. Well, that's what we believe. Uh, we're being told that uh, a report will be handed over to the president next week. You know, we don't know exactly what time frame the president will act on the report uh, or what announcements will be made, but uh, we, we are expecting that the report will receive the report next week. Right. Okay. You mean there's, there's been various speculations as to what it could entail, but you're guessing from your tone and what you just said that you're not expecting it to focus necessarily on the uranium market, but the nuclear market as a whole. So it's, it's, it's hard to kind of forecast what the impact could be. You know, I think, I think um, again, there's no guarantees, mm. but I, I believe the working group gets it. I think they get it. You know, I would be absolutely shocked if we get nothing here. The question is, you know, you know what will be proposed and what will the president, um, you know, decide is appropriate. So, um, but, you know, look, at as I, I've said to you, I think many times, not very often you get on the president's desk twice in 90 days. And I'm very proud that uh, we're able to do that. And we've got this uh, focus on the front end of the fuel cycle, the focus that is absolutely required by the United States government, the largest consumer of uranium in the world, the United States of America, one third of the world's uranium, we cannot go to zero. Yeah, okay. Well, look, just to position this for people watching this our subscribers and followers watching this i reached out to you because i've done a lot of interviews now with uranium ceos over the last three four months and we're starting to build up a picture as a as an investor starting to build up a picture of what the market looks like um i'd say that i am a believer in the macro story in terms of the supply demand story uh and what those numbers look like I, I don't have a sense on on timing. Uh, I don't think many people do. I've heard some, you know, from three months to, you know, 24 months uh, in, in terms of timing from people. So I wanted to speak to you about some of the things which some of the thoughts that we've had and just kind of get sort of affirmation of some of those thoughts if, if indeed you agree. Um, and those were that there are lots of different companies at different stages with, you know, and, and, and different positions financially as well, um, who may or may not make it, right? Depending on how long this goes on for. Um, but it was clear to me that you need three things. 
you need a management team who's been there and done it before. And I don't mean mining. I mean getting stuff out of the ground, getting it to where it needs to be in terms of being able to process it and sell it into market. That's one. Two, cash. Because a lot of companies running out of cash. And I, you know, I'll, I'll talk to a couple of things, which, you know, conversations I've had in, in a moment. Um, and three is the, you know, the fundamentals of the asset itself, where, you know, you've got to come back to that, you know, because mining is mining, right? Um, so do you mind if I start off with the management component with you first? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, and why, why, why I called you is because you, you have been through, you know, a couple of cycles, you know, you have produced. So what would you say to investors about why, the importance of why you, you know, the experience of having been through not only a couple of cycles, but you've actually produced product and got it into market. You know, why do you think that's important? Well, I, I think, um, you know, uranium is very unique and, you know, it has um, uh, a number of dynamics. I mean, certainly it is mining, but uh, when you start looking at um, uranium projects, uh, it, it, it has uh, the mining risk and processing risk. Um, it also has um, a lot of the, uh, you know, the risk with just the nature that it is uranium, you know, and is connected to the nuclear fuel cycle. And, you um, and I, I think that a lot of people underestimate um, how all those things kind of meld together um, and, and how, um, you know, one of those uh, elements can uh, really throw a monkey wrench into any project. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's also very unique that, um, you know, when you look at like the, um, the, the other mining industries like gold and copper, um, you know, silver, zinc, whatnot, um, they've had a lot more uh, continuous operations uh, uh, over the years. They haven't had the hiatuses that the uranium market has had. Um, you know, we've gone for, um, you know, we go through these, these peaks and valleys, and the valleys a lot of times are very pronounced and very long-lived, and you lose a lot of that expertise and the knowledge. So, um, you know, it, it is, there are similarities, but many differences. Yeah, I, th I think that's right. I mean... Well, the, the, your last point about, you know, a lot of the expertise has been lost because, um, you know, it's, it's been in the doldrums for a while. People have got to make a living and they go off and do other things. I mean, I've probably spoken to four CEOs who've managed to get companies into production and the rest are learning on the job. And I guess that as an investor, my, my problem is I don't necessarily want them to learn with my money because things can go wrong if you don't know they're coming down the line. I think to coin one of you, your phrase, which stuck with me, which was, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and that's fine with someone else's money, but not, not with mine. So it, it, it was, I just thought it was interesting the way that some of the conversations that we've had, um, it, it became obvious that these companies were just hoping that the market would come back, there'd be enough money sloshing around and some of these mistakes could get hidden by, you know, all this money that would be, you know, be thrown at them for, for investment. But, you know, when it, things are tight like they are now, it kind of comes on to the sec my second point, which is if you don't have the cash to be able to cope with this market, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. Well, again, um, it's pretty hard when these companies get to the point where, you know, they've gone to the equity markets multiple times. Um, the share price continues to um, to decline, uh, you know, the, the market just gets tired of the story. And, and um, so that's why it's important to, to, to maintain a healthy balance. And I think that one thing that, that uh, uh, is really a problem for a lot of these really small um, mining uh, companies, uh, juniors, micro caps, uh, and it's pretty chronic in uh, the entire industry is people get down to that last a thousand or maybe a million dollars or something and then they go out and try to raise money and um you know we're not going to be in that position you know we um of course we're, we're a lot more complicated than a lot of these other companies um other companies uh, may have one project it, it's not constructed so the holding costs may be lower um but uh yeah you know you, you just don't want to get against the rope yeah. when you're against the rope people know you're against the rope well yeah it's, it's kind of interesting to me you know i've gone through this kind of period of learning about this space speaking to some you know great influencers in in the market some fund managers i've you know managed to speak to a couple of the um 
the the utility companies. Um, it, and I had a I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. It made me really nervous actually for the first time in this space. You know, and it does again come back to that line that, as far as I'm concerned, not all boats will float on a high tide. It, it just won't because. I've been approached by a couple of groups to ask for my advice on some, well, okay, I won't, I won't name names, but, you know, on a couple of junior uranium companies who are struggling for cash. And they've, 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 they're speaking to these, these finance groups to take them out. It's like they've had enough. They, they, you know, they, they, they fought their, foot, their fight and don't want to go on or don't know how to go on. And it, you know that made me nervous because it, it, it kind of reinforced my thesis that I'm, I've been building up as an investor as to you know how do you how do you approach this? Because if I'm a buyer of the macro, there's going to be winners, but not everyone's a winner. It's clear because there's people struggling right now, you know. And the longer this goes on, I think the more problematic it becomes. Um, so if this thing goes on another six months, I can see more than a couple of companies struggling because they don't have the cash or ability to persuade generalist funds to put money in and the specialist funds have made their bets and they can probably see better than some of the generalist funds you know who's, who's going to make it who's, who's, who's not so um yeah i must say so that that kind of made me nervous it really made me nervous with a lot of these companies not only do they have no money but um they, they, they also have projects that are not proven. And, um, and many of those projects need hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. for capital investment, if not billions yeah. of dollars. Yeah, when you start talking about things like, um, you know, get, getting some kind of debt into the company to be able to be in a position to build out whatever it is that they've got, or be able to even pay for the feasibility studies. Again, there's, there's no real plan there. I mean, I mean, what's your, I mean, you, you, you've been around the block. You, you've seen a few, a few things, and you, you, you know some of the companies I'm probably talking about. I mean, what's your, what's your take on the market? I don't envy them. Right. I don't <laughs> envy them because, you know, right. when you're at the bottom of the bucket and there's no water coming in and to, to fill up your bucket, um, you know, what do you do? You know, and I, I think it, 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 it goes back to – there's no shortage of uranium, uranium deposits out there in the world, but they're not, not all created equal. And, um, you know, like you said, if they don't have any money for just, just daily operating expenses, um, in a lot of cases, those projects are not proven yet. They've never been commercialized. So there's a lot of technical risks for those projects. Uh, in most cases, it's going to be far, far more difficult, more costly, mm. take more time than they expect. And then you throw on top of that a new project is going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars in most cases, hundreds of millions of dollars, mm. if not billions of dollars. You know, it, it's a hole hard to crawl out of. And um, so, yeah, I don't envy uh, these folks, um, you know, and I think that you're at a huge disadvantage um, if you don't already have proven projects you don't already have projects that have um, the capital investments made um, so you're way back in the back of the bus and um, you know when you're in the back of the bus and you don't have any money you know you're not going to get up first class what i'm hearing is that exploration companies are some ways away certainly you know not in this cycle from getting into production so as an investor do I put my money into those now because it, money's cheap, but risk is high? There's some companies near with a possibility of being funded to get into production, but again, they're not going to get into production anytime soon. The next two, three years, maybe if they're ready to go today, but not many are. Or do you, you know, talk to producers, ready, you know, who are armed and ready to go? Yeah, look, look, and I, I'm, I'm a believer that. Um, if you're playing a sector like uranium, um, that um, you know your, your your safest bet is to play probably uh, two, three, four of 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 the the the, the better, uh, more established uh, companies 
Um, you know, and, and I think that you can do that in a way that does uh, manage your risk uh, to a certain extent. Mm. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, we, we've, we've seen um, the damage, the collateral damage that happened to a lot of people back in about, uh, you know, 2010, 11, yeah. uh, after Fukushima with the deterioration in share prices. And, and look at that, that, that hit us all. That hit Cameco, that had energy fuels mm. um, and, and everybody else. So there is no such thing as no risk, but there is such thing as less risk. True. And there is less thing as, you know, if you believe in the micro, macro, which I agree 100%, um, that you can play certain companies that have less risk right. and have probably the same upside as a lot of these riskier plays. You guys got hit July 12th, July 11th, 12th, Section 32 announcement. You guys got hit. Big time on your on your with your share price, right? You know, you you were you kind of dropped off a cliff there. You've recovered about 45, 50 cents since then. But what does that what does that tell people? What should that tell investors? Well, I mean, again, that's an example that you know certain events can 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 clobber these stocks. Um, I personally believe that um, you know that that were there people that were you know certainly had baked in. Um, you know, a, a positive outcome um, on the 232. Mm. You know, we thought, um, uh, as well as many others, um, even that we talked to in the government, that that uh, there was a high likelihood that that was going to happen. Mm. It didn't happen. So, um, you know, we, 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 we got hit, um, as did m most others, you know, sure. particularly those in the United States. So, um, you know, it's, again, it's, it's, it's a sector that, that in the up markets, it's, it's multiple bagger. Um, in the down market, it can be a multiple bagger the opposite direction. So it is, it is a tricky sector, but it, it still goes back to, you know, sophistication of how you make your investment. You know, it, 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 it shocks me sometimes that, you know, people will come to me and say, oh, I, um, I'm getting in the uranium business and I picked, you know, X, Y, and Z. And those are exactly the the, 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 the the product that I would never have recommended to, to these people. Now, even in some of those cases, you know, in the right circumstances, people can make money on those stocks. So, you know, I don't think there's any absolute here on 100% the best plan, but I also think that a lot of people making these investments, um, they don't like the super high volatility. And, um, I think that, um, you know, th there's just different elements of risk and, 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 and what people do, what percentage of their um, assets that they've invested in the high riskier uh, returns, um, you know, as composed compared to, you know, you know, what, what their, 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 their ultimate horizon is and how they're diversified. Yeah. Can I just talk about your mill? Because this is the other bit, which it's not one of my tick boxes, but it's definitely... It's a massive plus for you guys. And I just want to understand a little bit more about what that could mean. And we have just discussed it before. Um, it's one of uh, is it the only operating mill in the U.S. Is that right? Correct. There are two there others. Was, uh, there, there, yeah, well, look, at there's um, if you go back like uh, 30 years, there were like 35 mills. OK, right. And um, and, and White Mesa has uh, basically uh been in good standing, had uh, been completely operable uh, since that point in time. There are two other mills. Um, there's a Shooter and Canyon mill that ran for a few months or something back in 79 or 80 or something, uh, shut down. Um, and, and then there's a Sweetwater mill in Wyoming that ran for maybe it was a year or two, uh, also shut down um, um, 30, 35 years ago and hasn't operated since. Hmm. Looking at your mill, it gives you certainly optionality in terms of you know what what you do. But for people without a mill, what are their options? What are, how do they go about processing their their product? Well, they either uh, have to build their own mill, uh, or if in the region they have to to basically strike a deal with us to to have access to our mill. Right. And um, there is a, you know there is um, um, you know examples of where that's been done in the past uh, with sort of toll milling agreements or joint ventures or whatnot. 
So, you know, if you don't have the mill, um, you know, and you're, you're a conventional miner, um, you know, you don't have any options. You know, I've, I've had people tell me, oh, they don't need the mill. They can ship it to China or to Brazil or something like that. And, you know, that, that that's farcical. It's farcical. You know, you've got the cost of transportation and whatnot. So look at, you know, the, the mill, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just it's, it's kind of defaulted into our hands because um, the investments have been made. Um, you know, the mill was uh, correctly positioned for sustainability. And, and I think that's a, 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 a big um, issue that, that investors should feel comfortable that our mill has been around for 40 years, nearly 40 years, and it survived these, these peaks and these valleys because of its flexibility. Right. And, um, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's been able to uh, cash flow and many times, even though the uranium prices were, were too low to run it just for uranium production. What, what are your plans for the next six months if nothing happens in terms of the market, you know, price discovery in the market, or 12 months? I mean, what, what's that look, what's that look like? Well, look, at if we don't, <coughs> excuse me, if we don't get relief um, um, uh, through this government working group, um, you know, we'll, number one, we, we will, we'll, um, you know, manage our expenses, you know, as tightly as we can. Uh, we'll continue on with, you know, again, the, the macro environment we think is alive and well. Mm. Um, you know, we'll continue pushing these different uh, parts of our business that are less uranium um, price dependent, mm. you know, like the alternate feed and the, the cleanup of abandoned uranium mines. Right. Um, but um, no, look, look at we, you know, we all need, all everybody, chemical, everybody needs higher uranium prices. You know, this, this, this is really... Uh, a critical um, a crossroads that we're at um, with um, with the working group, but at the same time, um, you know the macro is sorting itself and sorting itself quite quickly. So, so you know we we expect that um, you know we've survived the test of time. We'll continue to survive the test of time, but it will be more difficult until uranium prices recover. What's, and I, I keep asking every time I see because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the answer is going to be each time. When's that going to be? Well, I, I liked your comment that, you know, a lot of people are, have, have quit speculating on that. <laughs> and I think I think that's one of the reasons that, um, uh, you know, these 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 share prices, uranium share prices have have been suffering. I think a lot of people are tired of speculating, including investors. You know, I think I think um, it, you know everybody seems to be wrong. You know, like you said, six months or two years or one year or whatnot. People have been saying that. Uh, but, you but, know, but here's the difference, Mark. Now. Here's the difference, Mark. If you're a fund manager, you kind of don't care if it's one year, two years, or three years. You're getting paid your two and twenty. It's all good, right? You can afford to be wrong for another three years. Okay. If you're an investor, like a Joe Schmo, like me where you're putting your own cash into this stuff and you're underwater and you don't know what's what's coming. You're unsure. You know, people have been telling the macro story for so long that you're beginning to doubt whether it's true or not. You know, you, you, you jump up and down and go hurrah every time you hear someone talk about the macro story. But maybe you start having doubts, right? So, you know, getting some sense of timing is important because it's, it's, it's our hard-earned cash here we're talking about. Yeah, no, absolutely, and 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 I always say that whenever people have the most doubts is is when you should should be investing more. You know, it's um, um, you know, the people like um, um, Rick Rule and whatnot. You know, he, he it's quite interesting to listen to some of his uh, uh, discussions of when he started getting interested in uranium. Um, you know, geez, back in I think it was, uh, um, you know, the late '90s, and he'll tell you how many doubts he had. But then yeah. he'll also tell you that he had, um, you know, multiple investments. And I think the worst uh, was like a 20 bagger or something. So, you know, it's um, it is a very um, unique um, frustrating. Uh, sector. Frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> and frustrating. But when it comes, it comes and it comes big. And, and um, you know, there are there are a lot of people that made a lot of money in this business yeah. uh, over the years. I mean, going back 40 years. Um, 
you know, going back in seven, eight, nine, ten, um, there is going to be a lot of money made again. And, and I'm betting on it. I really am. Um, I just want to make sure that people aren't being distracted by the BS and they focus on the fundamentals and what's important with regards to the company, assuming the macro is is true, and I, and I do believe it is. Uh, I just want them to make the right bets on the right companies rather than have their money frittered away by companies perhaps that are just struggling with G&A, let alone getting into production. Yeah, oh, look, you know, there, there are companies out there, and, and again, I won't name names, that even if the price of uranium goes to $100 a pound, they will not be successful. I hear you. And, 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 and I, think, I think that's kind of what you're alluding to. You don't want people to get in investments that will, will have no possibility of ever really making it. Yeah. You know, they might get a bit of a bounce off of an up market, but, um, you, know, you know, investing in uh, broken, um, you know, business models um, isn't a really good long-term strategy. It, yeah, well, I, I, I hope people are reading that. I'm not alluding to it. I'm trying to shout from the rooftops that, you know, in, in our assessment, having looked at these companies, looked at the numbers, done the analysis, I, I agree with you, Dan, you know, whether it's 100 bucks or, or, or 70 bucks, there are companies which are just not going to make it. They're not designed to make it. They don't have the people on board to show them how to make it. So I'm, I just want to help people ask the right questions. Yeah. And, and I, okay. I, 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 being in the space, I, I have to be a little more careful than I others when it comes to, <laughs> you know, pointing out some of the shortcomings. Sure. That's that. That's brown. Look, I, look, Mark. I appreciate your time today. I wanted to, I wanted to speak to you and a couple a couple of others and just sort of, you know, b- bounce our thesis off of you. And you know, I, 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 you know, I'm not sensing any 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 pushback. I, I didn't guess I would because, like I say, you you, you seem to have a few of these things. You know. Uh, in your business and that that's that's great i appreciate your time um and taking the call as well uh, i know you're you're not feeling well as, uh, at the moment either so uh, I, I doubly appreciate that no no look at i it's always a pleasure matt uh, i enjoy talking to you and yeah i wish i uh, didn't quite have this frog in my throat but um, um but i i don't think it you know held back what i'm saying uh, very much if any Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.